set up. Hello, this is Jeremy Bailey from TheEnvironmentGuy.com. So last week on Friday, we left off at um, uh, quite, a f quite a bit less. Let's see, what did we leave off? We left off with these wires and the pipes. Let's see, we had some of these arches were done. We had this scaffolding done. And I think we're, we're just starting working on roof pieces anyways there's a there's a lot changed got a fair bit done during the weekend so I'll show you some of the stuff that we have now I built or have been playing around with the pieces a bit to make this little um, area right here so we have this tent which is new we have a furnishings table some kind of sofa thing there we have Oh yeah, I made a bunch of windows and I made like some wrought iron baskets to go in those windows. I have like a hanging pot potter there. Um made some minor adjustments. I made this thing. It's like a little roof tile to go on top of there. Here's some more windows actually I'll show you here. I have a have some windows. I'm not entirely completed working on these. Uh, like I have some windows there. I'd like to model the boards that make up these uh, shutters for the windows. So I have three, four, four kinds of windows. That one's kind of a duplicate, but um, yeah, we have that. Um, working on making a balcony kind of thing to go on the building there. That's not complete, but sitting there. I'm starting to work on an interior space. So if we go in here, we can see I made this arch and I want there to be an inside shop area here. So basically the player could, there's like uh, this little place that will be between the buildings and there'll be, I'm thinking a restaurant. So, you know, a restaurant would work well. We have you know, this sheltered area with furniture that's outside, so people could come out with their food, eat out here, or they could be in this more private area between buildings. And I was thinking we'd have some, like, really, I want a very um, claustrophobic kind of feeling area. I know, some, some place with um, character. So you come in, there'd be like little tables and chairs all kind of scattered about in here. Maybe there could be a small area back here. And then, you know, the restaurant would be through this arch and in this area. And perhaps, perhaps there, I don't know. We shall see. That, that's what I'm thinking, putting a restaurant in there. Um, I need to make some more pieces for the pipes and wires. I noticed that when I put in this decorative piece that uh, wires and such just crash through it so I need a little a little um, u-shaped part so it can skip over that I made various minor adjustments to the existing models I passed through them once more to make sure the geometry is all good I adjusted the point of origins gave them names so most of the objects here have proper names uh, the wall pieces I came up this is the sizes that I came up with and I believe the sizes are here so yeah two units by four units one unit by two unit one by one unit and one unit by a half a unit and I, I find I can make ch pretty much anything with that uh, the roof I made like that little triangular wedge shape I also made a little border item to go along with it. Kind of a decorative piece. And is there anything else? Oh uh, yeah, I was working on, I want to put something on the top here for when the roof gets, gets to that point. I'm not uh, really happy with what I have for the roof, for the, the roof tiles. 
You see, I kind of need this extra part coming through here. I can't just have a one unit. Hmm, maybe I can. I know, I'll, I'll have to work on that a little bit. Um, yeah, there's there's some little things I'd like to adjust. Like in these, in these one unit by one unit size parts, I don't have uh, an end piece extending past that one unit uh, measurement. So there's always this little gap here where it's missing a tile. And the other thing with uh, using the grid religiously so is that you're going to end up with some places like this where objects are colliding. I've decided that's not a huge deal and I'm going to leave it that way. But if I had more than two weeks to work on this, I would definitely address issues like that. Um, so this is the beginning of the second week. It's Monday. I believe it was the 10th. Oh, yeah, I guess I have Monday till that the beginning of next week so it needs to be done I as you can see I already started building something I don't know if this this stuff here is going to end up in the game engine or not I'm I'm this is just in my scene because I'm playing around making sure everything works and is going to work when it imports into the engine but that's that's where I am right now Actually, yeah and I have these stuff on different layers can just see this. Uh, currently we're at 105,000 tries for this uh, little scene here, which I think is all right. It's not uh, going too high. I think a lot of that is being taken by this roof. How much is in one of those tiles? There's about 2,000 tries, a little bit under 2,000 for each of those things. I think, definitely think the roof can be done a bit better, but as I said, not going to worry about that too much at the moment. So today, yeah, working on that restaurant area, I want, I need to find some reference materials. So we're going to be spending some time doing that, and we're also going to be spending time modeling. I definitely want to work on the entrance to this area. Obviously, it's not quite complete right now. We have this uh, intersecting stuff here. But uh, I'm going to use this this rock arch that I made, I believe, on the first live stream for this I did. If it wasn't the first, it was the second, but uh, I made that arch. So I need to make a piece that goes above that arch. And, oh yeah, and I would also like to make uh, some lights. This is not a scene from ancient history. This is modern day, day Italy, so it should have lighting. If we look at the original reference material that was given by the studio, I'm doing this for, sorry, it's not there, it's in the reference. We can see that it is modern day in I Italy. We have this lights. So I really want to make this uh, light post here. That's going to be an excellent addition to the scene. And I also need to make some additional lights. Uh, I have actually I, there's a there's a restaurant it's called Olive Garden and Olive Garden is an Italian styled restaurant and they w and they make the interior of the restaurant look like Italy so they have the same kind of uh, you know walls that are like this the plaster and the arches and stuff but one of the things that they do is I know I don't know if this is authentic Italian or not, but they have almost like Christmas lights, you know, like a, a wire that they hang across the ceiling with a bunch of little, just uh, clear white light bulbs across it. And it looks pretty neat, and I was thinking it would look really neat uh, between this area here is lighting just uh, strings with little lights on them. It, be be really easy and fast to model and I think it would look really cool especially if you're cons thinking about this from the perspective of the final product in the game where the lights are actually shining look really neat at night so a little decorative item I'd like to make um, what else is there oh yeah I need to make some kind of decorative piece to go along the bottom of the buildings something similar to that I mean 
I could even just flip it around. Actually, that, that could work. I could just flip that around. But, um, oh yeah, and I also made a corner piece here for stone. So when you look at the edge, you can see it has the the silhouette of something that would be made of you know, like brick or stone. And uh, in a game, like it looks obvious here that this is modeled and that this is just a flat plane, but in the game we would have a normal map and the normal map would make it look like it had those same stones sticking out. So I know, I, I see this a fair bit on games. How many tries is that? It's only 198. Yeah, it's fine. Don't need to do anything to it. But um, yeah. So that's where we are. I might. I was thinking of maybe making a few damaged parts, like taking some of these pillars and breaking off some chunks. But uh, I think that's enough talk about that. So restaurants. We need to go look for some reference material regarding Italian restaurants. Okay, I don't want to search it there. I just butchered the spelling. Uh, Italian restaurants. So I see like wooden beams going on the ceiling, wooden floors, See circles and squares. I have noticed that's pretty common in uh, in the style of Italian. Everything's made of it's mainly a circle or a square with uh, little ornamental things going around the edges. So interesting lights. Stone walls. Okay, yeah, that's, that's cool. It has like a, it looks like a, a copper shelf. And they have like little pots and stuff hanging from there. That's pretty neat. I just might do that. What other interesting things can we find? nature yeah I'm not uh, making any plants simply because since it's not textured I won't be able to use alpha maps to cut out the leaves so I decided not to put the plants in but uh, definitely a consideration I should no I do have planters and such in the scene so seems like nature is also a large part of the Italian culture Oh, there's the Olive Garden I was just talking about. <laughs> Anyways. Iron bars, another common thing. I already have a number of items in my scene made of iron bars. I kind of like uh, something I see in the background here. Tokyo. Hmm, interesting. Oh, yeah, there's the uh, lights I was talking about. You can zoom in here. Here's a restaurant that has like those strings of clear white lights going on it. I know, it m must be a common thing. It's there. If it's in Tokyo, it must be in Italy. <laughs> eh. Uh, making some of these canvases would probably be a good idea as well. Those little uh, things that go over the windows and doors. Actually, come to think of it, I need to make some doors. So definitely one of the things on my list to do. Uh, I need to make some signs. Okay, let's bring up my notes. I should be taking note of these things. OK, 
Okay. So notes that we need to add. I'm just gonna put it down here. I need signs. I need doors. I need lights. I will need a bit of furniture. I've made some, but I think I need a few other pieces. Uh, I need some shelving. I need uh, some dishes. Pretty neat stuff. Cut out there. Oh yeah, I need. No, is, is that called an awning? I think those are called awnings. Those, the canvas that goes over the windows. Anyways, I'm gonna call it awning in here. Need to make some awnings. Uh, signs already there. Maybe I should add a subsection to the signs. I should have wall signs and floor signs. The lights. We need like a standing street lamp, the light strings, and wall lights. Any more interesting things we could find? That looks cool. Doesn't really feel Italian though. At least not my at least not my perception of Italian. You know, every every culture has a different perception of what other cultures are like. I mean to me, that that image right there is what Italy is. <laughs> I mean I've never been to Italy, but in their Canadian culture that's that's pretty much how we view it. Actually, that's a fantastic piece of reference. I'm going to save that image. Let's put it in... I don't know where to put that. doesn't really fit. I'll just get stick it into random. I like that thing. Fortunately, it's a. Hmm. Took me to a web page and it doesn't have that picture. Yeah, forget it. interesting oh yeah we need oh, another one of those websites that doesn't show you the picture that they had for a thumbnail I like the industrial ceilings those are pretty cool we can make some industrial stuff how about so we need to make some ceilings. I haven't made any kind of ceiling item so far. So things on the ceiling. I definitely like the industrial look. So things like uh, vents, caps locks is on. The vents, uh, see we already have pipes, we already have wires. Uh, 
corrugated steel. That's pretty neat. I like how thick this arch is here. My arches are a decent thickness, but they're not really thick. And would it be appropriate if I made this entrance thick? Let's test that theory. Unfortunately, you can't uh, select loops of triangles automatically. Maya doesn't do that either. Triangles confuse the computer. Could make it really... Hmm, what effect does that have? It makes it, I think it makes the area feel more spacious. And I was saying I wanted a more claustrophobic feeling, a closeness, I maybe a, a, a close warm feeling. Does that help it? What benefit would that have? If this were in game, let's say it was an, it was dark, and obviously we'd have lightings inside our restaurant, so light would be coming out of that, and we'd and the inside of that arch would be all illuminated, so it'd be a very bright spot, be easy to see. Now, if it were thin, it would still be bright, but not as bright. So there might be visibility advantages to having it thick. Um, if there's a lot of polys inside, it could also have the advantage of the player not seeing all the objects in there while they're at the exterior of the scene. But you can still see it from this angle. No, what should I do? Do it like that. Do I do it like that? Uh, I think I'm going to go for a, a thick arch. I'm going to go for it. No need to spend all my time thinking about that. That's neat. Okay, so I think we have some ideas. Uh, a door, yes. I think we should we should start doing the doors. So maybe there could be like a sliding door here. We could make a slot inside the arch and have some really big doors that can slide into it. one possibility or maybe we could have like a door that moves up and down so vertically and it could be mounted on the wall outside here and come down over that arch or no the the gate should be on this entrance here like into that area because that restaurant and this whole area is supposed to be like the restaurant area so this would be a little little back area of shops and that would be the entrance. All right, let's try that out.
to there would be fine. So this will be like the support for the gate. Now which way would the gate swing open? If it swings outwards, it would kind of block this path a bit. Hmm. But if it swings inwards, it's not going to be as visible from the outside. And if that's an important area where we want to see the interior space, we should we should make it so that it directs the player's attention to that to that space. So maybe we want it to swing outside. Anyways. get our uh, scale reference here for our player just so we can better understand what we're working with one on this side is that too thick? That might be too thick. Yeah, that's good. So you have that. Give it a bevel. This is something that's going to be at uh, the player's eye level that we'll be able to walk right up to. So we want this to be fairly detailed for the top of it. We'll just cut it like so. For the bottom of it, I'm just going to delete the face entirely because it's not going to be visible. Or maybe it should be visible. We could we could make it so it's a little bit above the ground and have it anchored to these pillars. I think that would be more interesting. It'd be a more interesting design to have it that way. And it would also give uh, clearance for this uh, floor tiles or whatever we want on the ground as well. So that would be a good design decision. All right. So for connecting it to pillar. Let's grab a face. Where did that face go? It didn't snap to the right place. Oh, the uh, origin isn't at the geometry. That's why it's not working. There we go. Extrude that out. So what kind of design could we give that face? Look for some designs. A hang. It's like the most generic search terms you can possibly use. Italian door hinge. <laughs> That's a pretty cool item. Mm. 
stuff like that is what I was thinking about. That is really neat looking. I don't want to make it too complex though. Save this image. Let's put in decorative and let's go open up our side thing here and load that image. Maybe I'll just model it from here. So let's add a plane. And I'm going to model kind of like that one. Well, I think maybe just too many polys, though. I don't know if it's worth the poly count to make all those little stringy things. That one, once again, not quite worth the poly cow. I'm going to do this one right here. So, like that. We'll do so we will extrude that out. Don't need those faces. We will subdivide those. Actually, no, loop cut. Let's go perspective for a moment to see that. Now that it is loop cut, if we select both of those, scale them in, we can use the bevel tool to create that curve. It's not quite the right curve. noisy outside today. A lot of extra noise in the microphone. Anyways, we now got that shape. Select those edges. Extrude. Scale them in. Move them along there. It's okay that it's not lining up perfectly. Like that, once again, just loop cut there, loop cut there. This time I'm going to scale it outwards. Use the bevel tool to create a round corner. Extrude 
kan do the same thing to make those curves It's not a, a perfect recreation, but it will have to do. here get it to the correct scale Too long. So to compress it, I'll just 
just grab those and move them in like so. Piece there, piece up there. Looks pretty neat. So the next part is need to face it off. I always feel that my hands are the slowest part of this process. If I could just control this with my mind, it would be over in an instant. It doesn't matter how much experience you have with it, there's always a certain amount of time it takes just to operate the tools. And uh, Blender's hotkeys allow me to access just about any tool instantaneously. But I still have to use the precision of my hands to guide these things. And that's where most of the time usage happens in the modeling process, at least for this kind of modeling. It's a little bit different with the sculpting. Save myself some time. I'm just going to delete that. Move it up like so. This may this part may or may not work. I'm sure. Usually, places where bevel tools have problems is where you have these tries, like at the point here. Like there's five edges coming off of one vertice. That's probably a place where the bevel tool is going to struggle. tries are it makes gets all funky so what can we do to fix that see if that helps does not seem to be helping I might just have to do a little bit of manual work here Oh well. Not too big of a deal.
is 480 tries. A little bit heavy for a small object, but I think it's going to look pretty nice as a result. I was thinking of making a hole in there. Should I? Yeah, sure. Let's do it. Turn off back face calling. See what's going on. Snap that. Right. Not too bad. Let's see if it'll bevel that. Not very well. Good. 
let's adjust the thickness of this object. This is just a metal plate, so it doesn't need to be quite so obtrusive. There we go. I think that looks decent. Quite detailed. Enough for uh, the purpose of a game engine, so let's move along. So with that done, we now need some way to connect this to that. And we can do that by duplicating that object, scaling it down. Let's see. Selecting the faces on the top, because we don't need those anymore. Faces. Can extrude those out. Hmm. Do I want that? That is one way of doing it. I don't think that's what I want. Maybe I can adjust this. Needs to be more decorative. Not working. Uh, if that doesn't work, then what should I do? Maybe if I make that double loop there, do a double loop.
right. Hey, blue light. Where's my light? There it is. Shine it directly in there. Looks like it's working now. Move that guy out of the way. Hey, I still got a shadow. Where's that shadow coming from? It's from that. great light angle but that works maybe I'll do something here as well need those inside faces because they're not visible.
this another going to be another decorative piece. Let's see, where did that? Oh, there it is. Line it up with the center there. Very nice. Now, I'd like to put uh, something curved in there. You know how they have, they have like uh, this kind of iron work where they bend the bars and they have it looking like vines and stuff. I think that should be in that space there. So to do that, I'll just use a busier curve. Down there. Scale it down. Once we move it into position, like so. Just bevel it. should have some designs in my reference material. Something like that. That kind of ironwork stuff. Little swirls. Do I have other stuff? that. Ok. 
Okay. Just going to add that image onto the corner of the screen there. I won't be able to do it because I have duplicates. I wasn't aware that Blender would also transform the differences to match the scale. It's a little bit annoying. should just do it entirely 2D and then make the offset afterwards. Be simpler that way. like that. So next we have to set the correct resolutions. Uh, 
that the babies are crying again. My window's open, so all the noise from the neighbors comes in. Doesn't seem to be doing much. Should be changing that quite a bit. There we go. seem to be working. So it makes it uh, thin when it starts and thin where it ends. Yeah, I don't really like that. That really isn't working well. Hey, you know what? I raised up that object so much that I can't see the scene anymore. Let's see, get me back there. No. Okay, center it on that. Good. We're back in position. Let's get rid of that curve paper isn't doing much. Maybe I selected the wrong curve. I have a curve there. Ah, that's what it was. Sorry, I, I was using the wrong object. I already have a, a taper curve in here. See now that affects that affects it. I don't know. I'm gonna say no to taper. And let's convert it to a mesh. Duplicate it. Scale it by a negative one. Back up here. Actually, I shouldn't have converted that to a mesh. That's what I need to do. here now I can move those points so it's not colliding with itself there hmm, it's pretty interesting tries is that that is 288 tries which is quite a few five yeah it it'll be okay so next I want to add 
That's a small bevel in there. Two bevel. Just combine those objects together. All together makes seven hundred three tries. Or sorry, thirteen hundred tries. So it's a little bit heavy of an object, but I'm still well within the a reasonable polygon count for the scene overall. And since this is a this is meant to be a point of interest for the player because that's where the shop's going to be and they have to enter through this area. I think it's all right to put some extra detail into it. Could even put some detail into this bar. Hmm. What could I put into this bar that would be interesting? We need to fit like a circle coming out. I'm going to try something. I'll make a duplicate of this just so I don't mess it up too badly. I'm thinking something like that. Does it work? I like that. No, that works. And the player level is right here. So maybe a few more cuts than that. That was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven cuts. All right, let's try this once more then. And maybe I'll move that loop up a little bit, just there. This one can move up a little bit. Comes out like that. Make it to 10 cuts. Yeah, that's fine. I think that's good. Next, let's just make sure it uh, gets lined up perfectly. So cursor two selected, merge into 3D cursor, medium, grab, there we go. Nice. Okay, so with that done, the next thing is we need an actual hinge on here so we can put on our metal thing. Let's see, maybe we should make the door before the hinge. Uh, 
that. The door itself can go up higher. I'm just thinking about size right now. I should take this. so I have the proper spacing. Actually, it needs to be joined. I'm just going to make that whole thing one object. And now I can set set an origin and a point to snap it to. It's lined up correctly. There we go. Now it's uh, flush with the pillar. And let's set the origin to be... Let's see, where should the origin be? Hmm. Not sure. I'm not sure, because if it's going to be on these pillars, I could put the origin at the corner of this pillar here so that whenever you try to snap it to this pillar it fits on perfectly but then it won't fit well onto other places maybe i should put it like there that could be its origin point now now it's flush with the surface and i can snap it to other places not just that pillar i'm satisfied with that Ever, it doesn't line up there then. Okay, it's not going to work. Let's put it right there then. That should work because I believe that's the very center of the object. Okay, that should be good. So now we have the a space to work within. So to find out the distance we want, I am going to snap this plane to these bars, like so. So we have the exact distance. Actually, come to think of it, one other thing that I haven't taken into consideration, that's the, uh, these pillars, I put the origin on the corner here, because I thought that would be a better place to put it, but I think it needs to be in the center, so that whenever you put it on the edge of the wall, it's always, like it's right dead on the middle, and if, if I place these without having done that, it means that the space here is going to change, and I don't want that. So I'm going to change these pillars first. And now put it on the edge of that wall. And let's make sure that the edge of this wall We have proper spacing here. If I duplicate that again, see it's not uh, properly spaced. There. Now it's the proper unit spacing. Good thing we checked. See, you always need to check things like that. Now we have, I can safely put it there. Cup 
calculations. No, I don't, I don't know if I like the proportions as much now. It kind of looked nicer when it was... Well, you know what? These buildings... They're not connected to each other. So I cooked at the mini distance I liked. Yeah, oh well, it's fine. It's not a big issue, I'm just worrying about little insignificant details because I'm an artist and that's what artists do. They worry about little details. <laughs> our spacing. So now that that is solved, we need to make some kind of gate and we have this image on the side here. We might make something that is similar to that in design. Let's see. I just had a sudden craving for Chinese food. That's weird. I just got the taste of uh, ginger beef and fried rice. Completely random. should do this flat. Actually, I need one more measurement here. I need to know what, uh, how many units up I am. Let's just grab one of these reference devices, objects. You know, call them what you like. Over there. So that's three units. Four units. So five units looks like that'll be the maximum height. And we also have to keep into consideration the cutoff on the edges from the arch that goes above. So, let's make this higher. Like that, yes. I like that. That'll also, yeah, that also fixes the ratio that I was complaining about earlier. This is one place where I like uh, Maya's deformer curves. Blender has it as well, but it's a little bit harder to work with Blender's version. But I'm going to try. If we add in a curve. 
curve. Where is it? There. deformer to our object. Actually we need to add a little bit of geometry to this. So we have something to deform. Now we'll add the deformer. see it's now being deformed by this curve. I guess I guess Blender Blender's curve deformer isn't too bad. It's just not fantastic. I don't know, I, I think Maya's version is just slightly easier to work with. swirl. It's kind of working. I'm sure there must be an easier way to make that part of it, but anyways. We get a swirl thing similar to what we have in this reference image on this corner here. The top piece. So now we're just going to apply that deformer. And we need to get this lined up so it's vertical again. So what's going on? I think bottom part moved. Get that lined up. I am not satisfied. Maybe what I will do is select those. I'll just separate them to their own object temporarily and then I can align this top piece once that's aligned I can align that piece join them back together and merge the vertices there we go so we now have that and to make that thick I'm going to do an extrusion and scale along the normals It would look something like that. Yeah, I think that's decent. Uh, maybe I want to add a little bit of detail right there. 
This is the bevel tool. Like so. There, now it's not all chunky on that end. Why did it, why is it not scaling along the normals correctly now? Oh, I know why. It's because they, I flipped the normals. There we go. I just, I edited the mesh with an operation that uh, changed the normal directions. So the scale of log normals wasn't working properly. It's all fine now. Cool. I like that. Looks nice. It looks nice. You've done a good job. And for bubble, let's see what will I do for that. I think if I bubble those edges, there will be too many polys. So what I'll do instead is I'll make a loop cut in the middle and scale it along a constrained axis. Like so. There, that works. And that is 200 tries. So, well within the limits. So now that we have that piece, we have kind of the same thing. It's just uh, shorter. So let's see here. I'm going to give it a the origin there so that I can snap it. Good to edit mode and move those pieces down. I think that looks pretty nice. Hey, what's that? Oh. I had a vertice selected by accident. There we go. Fixed. So next, there's like um, some kind of S-curve pieces in here. So I'm just going to add uh, another plane. Plane to the scene, move that up. Scale it so it's thin. Two loop cuts. And we'll bring it up. The other shall push it down. We can be uh, extreme with this because the bevel tool will average it out. Something like that. Yeah, it's pretty nice. It's satisfactory.
there's an unneeded face in there. Just those ones at the ends. I could say that is good. And for beveling, we only need to bevel the bottom because the player is not going to see the top. Or if they do see the top, it's going to be from a far distance. I'm always almost thinking I didn't put enough polys in there. Get right down to the player's perspective. Make sure that is working. Yeah, I think it's okay. Next thing, there is, so there's more curved pieces like that, but they are not flat. Looks more like a cylindrical. So I think I'll use a curve to model those things. size reference there. So what I'm going to do with this, once it's been converted to a mesh, I'm going to leave the polys that are on the top here and dissolve those edges because those aren't really needed, but I do need them right at the turns there because the player's face is going to come really close to this piece. So I want to have pretty, pretty good resolution in there. Good. 
let's convert that to a mesh. I'm going to save one just so I keep that curve. And let's decide on uh, the proper bevel resolution. Or sorry, the depth. mesh and now with what I mentioned about getting rid of some of these excess loops do it just like this Still looks like the same object, just with fewer polys. Next part to do, looks like we have some vertical pieces, some swirls. Let's do the swirls. And once I do that, I'll put in the final touches. We're getting, we're getting close, close to completion. to reduce my depth a little bit. It's going to be a little bit less gauge. And let's start playing around. Right.
pretty nice. You can tell somewhat what their parents are like by what the kids say. <laughs> uh, sometimes they say silly things. I'm not sure I'm happy with Coming along.
Okay. I'd say that's looking pretty nice. I'm just going to save myself a spare here. Back there. And I'm going to convert these into meshes. After setting the appropriate resolutions. in that one. I think I'll be okay. So that's right at the player's eye level. So I do want that to be smooth. Okay, it's fine. That's fine. But these ones don't need as much resolutions as the one on the bottom. Although that's a little bit still gonna have to go through it and dissolve edges anyways. It's okay. It's 
right up here that really gets bad. One looks fine like that. I'm not even going to knock any out. As fine as it is. That one. This player level is down here. Looking up. Looks pretty nice so far. So, the next part we want is the bars in here. It's kind of an interesting thing happening at the bottom, but I don't know, maybe, maybe I'll put something interesting in that bottom section. But for right now, let's just put those vertical bars in. Put it in a cube. The, the vertical bars are good. I mean, yeah, we could keep going into detail with curves, but curves take a lot of polys. And cubes, however, do not take a lot of polys. What I'll do is use an array to get these spaced properly. Good. These need to be snapped into the correct positions.
open these correctly here. There we go. Fix that problem.
this has actually worked out in my favor. Nice. Very nice. All right. Try to get rid of that plane. I don't need that plane there. I don't need that scale reference there either. what's going on. There we go.
light something. At the bottom. So it looks like in this gate here it has a really large bar. Sure, I'm happy with that. Grab that curve again. Add some more curved elements. Still just feels a little bit empty on the bottom. I don't think vertical bars are appropriate for this location.
don't know, it still feels empty. Maybe I should extend those bars more. I mean, that is a possibility. I just looked at the time on here and it's already been two and a half hours. I think I'm going to finish up this gate here and end the live stream and then continue working on it for today. And then tomorrow I'll come back and show the updates. Time sure goes by quickly.
display display start to look more full good there's nothing worse than a gate that doesn't look like it would function as a gate Now there's lots of other smaller details that could be put into this, but I'm not going to right now because that's going to take more time and it's also going to, no, it's going to take more polys, not sure what the poly count on this is, let's see, we need hinges. I think I'm going to do a fairly simple hinge. Let's add a cylinder. Now I want this to be a functional hinge, so part of there's going to be one side connected to the gate and the other side connected to this round thing. Join them together. Those two pieces. 
move them over. Separate them. join these objects. the gates. Make sure those are included. Control J. Actually, get rid of those. Control J. Not a selective mesh. Do I still have curves in here? No, I don't. So 3,800 tries. That's fine. I have no complaints about that. So altogether, see if that's. Let's just say that's 4,000 tries, and that's another 3,000. So it's 14,000 tries for the whole thing, both sides. A little bit heavy, but as I said, this is a one-off item. It will not be anywhere else in the level. So I think it's deserving to be there. with the origin would be said it would be right there. There we go. And for this gate we want the origin to be on this hinge so that we can rotate this object and have it stay on the hinge open and close as we would expect the gate to open and close.
Why is that not lining up? Actually, it's not quite the right place to put the origin. I need to get rid of those engons and then it'll work. So. And just checking to make sure it's going to render out okay. See if there just reveals if there's any problems with that mesh or a certain kinds of problems. But I think it's going to be all right. Is it? Oh, this is on GPU. I have uh, 12 threads on this computer, so usually I get 12 of these squares rendering at once, but when it's on GPU I only get one. I think it's looking all right. Can't wait to put this into the Unreal Engine. Well, that's a wrap up for this live stream. Went on for quite a while, didn't talk lots, no background <laughs> music. Sure, my live streams probably aren't interesting to watch for most people, but um, if anyone does see this, thanks for watching and have a good day.